Hello everyone, it's Terry, and welcome back to another edition of An Orchid a Day. Now today, like the title says, wasn't my fault. This was one that I was not expecting, and as I'm looking at it now, I realize that I don't even have a tag on it. This was a flub up. This was a mistake. I, you know that I had a dendrobium hibiki, it was mounted, it bloomed for me really nicely. And you know that I lost it over the winter time. And so it was one of those plants that I kind of wanted to get again. But since I have so many, it was one of those that wasn't really on my immediate list to get until I saw one on Facebook group from Philip Hamilton, um, from Brethren. And he had a blue one, not a blue one, how to get blue it was more of a pastel uh pink color as opposed to the normal dark fuchsia of hibiki so i was immediately charmed and bought it and this is what came which is a tetraspis c1 now you know that i've been obsessed with phalaenopsis but this was one that i could have could really honestly do without um but I have always admired other people's Tetraspis. From afar, I do know that they are white and some of them have spots, some of them have irregular lines going through them in sort of a pattern, but some of them, most of them do not. So most of them do turn out white. C1 is a little bit special because it is a special clone that is sought after just because it produces flowers with <coughs> more solid red segments that are randomly on the, uh, the petals at each flowering, it's different. So um, that makes it a little bit special. But overall, Tetraspis is an epiphytic orchid. It comes from wet and warm woods, pretty much at sea level in the Sumatra uh, Nicobar Islands. It is known as the Four Shield Phalaenopsis. And I will put a picture of it up blooms in the spring on an arching many flowered inflorescence and the flowers are very glossy and fragrant. Um, Phalaenopsis tetraspis needs a high light level, not Cattleya light, but they don't like direct sun, but they do like a fairly high level of light. I'm sorry, they need, they like shade. They do not like even Phalaenopsis. They like less than Phalaenopsis light, but they like 12 hours of that. Um, they like to be constantly uh, moist, not wet, so they want to be watered again when their media is almost dry. Um, also, when you're watering them, you have to make sure you water them early in the day and make sure that their roots are dry by night. Um, they can be mounted, and again, when you mount them, they do need more watering, um, but again, their roots need to be dry. Um, Often when you mount them, you will need to have a bit of sphagnum under the roots to give them extra moisture. But again, care needs to be taken so that they are dry before the evening. Um, also in watering, um, the species is fertilized every third watering with half a dose of the recommended fertilizer, recommendation on the bottle. It does not get any rest period. What it does need in order for it to flower, to initiate flowering, is they need a change in a difference in the temperature from night to day. By only two to three degrees, um, that will initiate flowering. The difference between day and night temperature is what I'm trying to say. Um, also, um, I said they were fragrant. The humidity needs to be about 75 to 80 percent year-round, although late winter when they are getting themselves ready to try to bloom, the humidity can be less. And that is my flub up, folks, so don't blame me for it, not another Phalaenopsis. This one will be repotted pretty soon because you can see the moss is green. It does have a spike on it. I'm not too caring about the spike, and you do can see those roots that are winding itself around the rim and then there's right there a green tip when looking at this right in the eye and this appears to be a new leaf coming out so it does appear to be a very healthy plant even though it is one that i did not want so 
don't blame me. Blame Philip Hamilton, who is someone you all are familiar, I'm sure, with Brethren. If you're a purist and you're an enthusiast and you love all things Basavala, it's connected with, uh, well, of course, Brethren and also his father is uh, Charles, I believe it's Charles, no, Claude Hamilton of uh, Hamlin's orchids from Jamaica. And um, really the only time you can get their plants is if you are in Florida or if you are down at Tamiami, pretty much. That's the only time you can get their plants. So I would say that's a benefit of being in Florida, not necessarily the weather. Certainly not because you can grow your plants down outside. I'm not for that. Well, those snakes, I don't have snakes here, but that's another whole story. This is my new Tetraspa C1. Basically a gift because my Hibiki will be arriving tomorrow probably. So, and he didn't say send this back. So another Phalaenopsis, a species. Thanks for watching folks. Enjoy your orchids, bye.